one of the many applications of derivatives is finding the or solving word problems invol involving rates of change. And by definition, rates of change is describing the motion of an object moving in a straight line. And we have here an example of a word problem that is considered a rate of change, which is finding the velocity of a moving object. In this case, at t equals zero, the diver jumps from a platform 32 feet above the water. What is the diver's velocity at time equal to two seconds, where t is in time in seconds? Every time you have a word problem in calculus that uses derivatives, and especially in rates of change, you will always be given a function. And in this particular word problem, the function that we're using is f of x is equal to negative 16t squared plus 16t plus 32. And this is the diver's function as he or she hits the uh, water diving from a 32 feet platform above the water. Now, to find the velocity of the diver, we need to find the first derivative of our function. So the first derivative is always with the velocity, and the second derivative applies for the acceleration. And since we are looking for velocity, we're just finding the first derivative of our function. And it gives us negative 32x plus 16. And this is the function for the velocity that we will use to find the velocity at t equals 2 of this particular diver diving from the top of 32 feet platform. So at f prime of 2, by substitution, negative 32 times 2 is plus 16 is equal to negative 48. So here in this word problem, we found out that the diver's velocity as or at time equals 2 seconds will be at negative 48. So therefore, diver's velocity at time equals 2 or 2 seconds is negative 48 feet per second. And this answer makes sense because we are getting negative answer. Because if the diver is hitting from the top going down, your velocity is supposed to be a neg negative sign. Now, if an object that is moving is moving upwards, then most likely our velocity will be a positive velocity. Now, this is one example of rates of change problem, specifically finding the velocity of a moving object. Now, in calculus, we have the opportunity to um, look into a moving object even if we're not seeing the actual object moving. We can also tell if the object is speeding up or slowing down. And we do this by using the first derivative and the second derivative, which gives us the velocity and acceleration, respectively. So, according to our rule, an object is speeding up if the velocity is positive and its acceleration is also positive. So if you are given a function and you took the first derivative and it gives you a positive um, sign for your velocity and then you take the second derivative which is your acceleration and it also gives you a positive sign for your acceleration therefore that particular object is speeding up. And also if that function is giving you a negative sign for its velocity and also a negative sign for its acceleration that particular object is also speeding up. So this is a rule that you need to remember in calculus regarding velocity and acceleration in connection to speeding up or slowing down. So if it's speeding up using this particular form, slowing down is going to be a little bit different. Here, you will also look at the velocity and acceleration of, the, of an object. If the velocity of your function is positive or greater than zero, and your acceleration, or the acceleration you're getting after the second derivative, is giving you a negative sign, therefore it's slowing down. So if they have a different sign, if the velocity is positive and the acceleration is negative, therefore your object is slowing down. Same goes with the velocity of a negative number and an acceleration of a positive number. That particular object is also slowing down because they have different signs. So that is the simple rule of calculus when you're looking at an object moving or speeding up or slowing down. And we're going to use this in our examples later on. So you need to take note of this rules in visualizing movements using derivatives. It's important in application of derivatives that you know how to use your sign chart. And in this um, example, I'm going to show you how you use your sign chart to verify the signs of your velocity. Now, sign chart by definition is the chart that we use to verify the sign 
of the object moving at a given time. So in this particular example, we are given a velocity or the velocity function. The velocity function is t squared minus 6t plus 8, and we need to verify the movement of your velocity using the sign chart. Now, you need to take note of that when you're looking at a word problem, you should know what is being what function is given to you is it the position is it the velocity or is it the acceleration so that you would know how to process your work so in this case since velocity is already given we don't need to take the derivative of that function because we need our velocity to verify the signs of our um, function for velocity given t is equal 4 and t is equal 2. Now, how did you get t equals 4 and t is equal to 2 from our velocity? Since we have a quadratic equation of t squared minus 6t plus 8, solve the quadratic equation by factoring and we'll have t minus 4 times t minus 2. So these are our two factors. Use the zero product property and you'll have 4 and 2. Now these numbers right here is very important in our sign chart because those numbers will be our intervals to check whether it's moving forward or moving backwards in terms of the signs of the velocity. And how do we use the velocity function for our interval? So this is my interval. So I have the first interval, anything lo lower than two. The second interval is the time in between two seconds and four seconds. And the third interval will be anything higher than four seconds. Now to verify the signs of the given interval for your velocity, all you need to do is to plug in the value that is covered by this range. So for the first range, anything lower than two, you can substitute any number that is lower than two. You can start at one, two, or one, negative two, zero, or any negative number. So in this case, I use zero because zero is less than two and it's covered in this interval. So I have t squared minus 60 plus 8 after plugging in the value of 0 I got positive 8 so that means the velocity or my sign for my first interval for my velocity is positive because of my substitution method now for the second verification I need to choose a number in between 2 and 4 and use my velocity function to check if my sign is going to be positive or negative so I chose 3, and after using 3, I got negative 1 as my answer. So negative 1 is a negative number, so that means my velocity or the sign of my velocity between this interval is negative. And for my last interval, I have anything higher than 4 seconds, so I'm using 5 as my um, substituted number. And by using 5, I have positive 3 as my answer, which gives me a positive sign for my velocity for this interval. And this is, a, this is a summary of my sign chart and how to show the movement of my particle using velocity or the signs of the velocity. So for time less than 2 seconds, my particle is moving forward because it has a positive sign right here. Now, in between 2 seconds and 4 seconds, my particle is moving backwards because I have a negative sign using my sign chart. And my velocity sign for t greater than 4 will be positive. That's why it's moving forward. And this is how you summarize and check how the movement of an object is using your velocity. And this is how we illustrate the movement of an object after we found the interval and the signs of your velocity using the sign chart. So at t less than 2, it's moving forward. At t in between 2 and 4 seconds, it's moving backwards. And at t greater than 4, it is moving forward. So here's my illustration. So I started at t equals 0 because I need anything lower than 2. And I could start at 1 or 0, so I started at 0 in my illustration. So at t equals 0, up until t equals 2, my object is moving forward, so my arrow is moving to the right. And at time t, in between t and 4, or 2 and 4, the object is moving backwards. So now I'm going to show an arrow that is moving backwards, going to the left. So I chose at time t equals 2 and t equals 3. 3 is in between, is, or in the interval 2 and 4, so I could use 3 as my number. And then from time t equals 3, all the way to t equals 5, I know it's moving forward because in my sign chart, I'm getting a positive sign for my velocity. So this is my illustration for my motion using calculus. And this is what we're going to use when we uh, answer word problems 
um, using rates of change or word problems rela related to rates of change. So once again, you need to remember that an object is moving forward when your velocity sign is positive. And when you're moving backwards, you know your, that the sign of your velocity is negative. So the movement of your object in motion is dependent on the sign of your velocity equation. And that's what you need to remember in rates of change. Now let's have another example in how to show movement of a certain object in AP calculus. So we have here an example. The equation of a motion of a particle is s equal t cubed minus 6t squared plus 9t, where s is measured in meters and t is measured in seconds. We are asked to find when is the particle moving forward and when is the particle moving backwards. So let's solve this word problem using the skills or the um, steps that we just learned from the previous slides. Now, to answer this question, when is the particle moving forward or when is it moving backwards, the first step that we need to do is to find the velocity because we are given an equation or a function. We need to find the velocity by finding the first derivative of the function s. And in this case, our velocity is 3t squared minus 12t plus 9. After finding the velocity, we need to find the values of t by solving our quadratic equation. So we can factor this out by finding the GCF and factoring t squared minus 4t plus 3, and it will give us 3 times t minus 3 times t minus 1. So our factors are 3, t minus 3, and t minus 1. And if we use the zero product property or equating each of them to zero, we will find out that t is going to be equal to 3 and t is equal to 1, which is one of the most important um, point or part in our problem because we are supposed to find the signs of the velocity using those intervals. So we have here our, our sign chart at 1 second and 3 seconds, so we need to verify it for anything less than 1 second in between 1 and 3 seconds and anything higher than 3 seconds. So let's start with the first function. We will verify our sign for velocity at anything less than one second. So here I will choose the number, or I can choose numbers from 0.99 up until the negative infinity. And in this case, I chose 0.5. So I verified my sign using 0.5, using my equation for the velocity. I found out that my sign will give me 3.75, which is positive. So that's my sign for the first interval, anything lower than one second. Now, on my time in between one second and three seconds, I will choose numbers in between them. So I could start from 1.1 .1 up until 2.99. And here I chose 2. So 2 is still in between 1 and 3, so I can still use it to verify my sign. And after substituting it to my velocity equation, I have negative 3, which gives me a negative sign for that interval. And for the last interval, I have um, anything greater than 3 seconds. I can choose any number greater than 3. So I chose 4, used it, and got 9 as my result, so I have a positive sign for three seconds or anything higher than three seconds. And to summarize my sign chart, I could tell that it's moving forward at time t less than one. It's moving backwards in between time one and time three, and it's moving forward at t greater than three. So that's my summary of my signs using the sign chart that I just shown you. Now, to illustrate or to answer the second question, which is illustrating the movement of my particle, I will have my sign chart again, and I know that it will give me positive, negative, and positive. And to illustrate it, moving forward, I could start at time t equals zero, and from zero, I will move forward to t equals 1. So my arrow is moving to the right because I'm showing um, a forward motion. And to show a backward motion, I, ch I will choose another number in between 1 and 3. And I chose 3. And I know it's moving backwards from the sign chart that we just um, did. So that is my movement. And for my last number, I will choose 5. 
at t equals 5, I know that it's increasing or moving forward because they have a positive sign. And this is my illustration for my movement or my motion for this particular particle. And this, uh, this is how we apply the sign chart and uh, the formula that we know about movement of an object using its sign or velocity.